happens, and we all have feelings. So what do we do with our feelings? You know, we have feelings. Sometimes we have feelings of guilt, shame, low self-esteem. We have all are human beings. We all experience different feelings in your life. And, of course, one of the important things is uh, identify what you're feeling. Now, I don't know where you're at in this area. All I can do is share my life. And sometimes I feel certain things, and I say, Lord, what am I feeling? Now, how many has ever been there, what I just said? You're feeling something, and you say, Lord, what am I feeling? Because you're feeling it in your spirit. You, 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 you say, God, what, what is this? Because I know i got to know what I'm feeling to know how to pray. You know what I mean? And uh, believe it or not, sometimes if, if you're around... If you're around people talking negative a lot of times, you can pick up that negative feeling, and you're feeling negative too, okay? Now, I want to try to help you tonight to understand some things that you may be feeling and don't know how to handle it. And uh, not that I'm an expert on it, but I have many years of experience uh, in, in, believe me, in, in trying to discern my feelings, you know. And so... Sometimes, I know we were, Susan's got about six people in her family that's uh, on the way out. I mean, they're fixing to go to glory, okay? So that's affecting Susan. That's affected me. And if we talk about it all day, then we can get a feeling of doom and gloom, despair, and all of our joy leaves. How many know what I'm talking about? And so we have to, we have to talk about it a little bit and pray about it. Uh, her brother, youngest brother, is he might have about three months to live within that window there, three months. And, uh, and of course, his wife is pretty bad shape. Uh, Susan's uh, niece's husband has got cancer, so he's on the way out. And... Uh, also got another nephew that uh, is on the way out. I got another niece on the way out. So uh, most of the family is going to be in glory. And, and the only people that's going to be left behind is Susan and me. Now, you know, that affects our feeling. W would you say that affects your feeling? You know what I mean? And, and so if we're not careful, we can let that just drag us down. And I hope I'm not going to give it to you tonight. <laughs> but... Uh, we have to clear our spirit. We have to clear what we're feeling. And we have to, you have to pray and pray it off your spirit, okay? So a lot of times you are feeling things with your spirit man. Your spirit man picks things up. Sometimes I, I say, Lord, wh why do I pick it up? What can I do, you know? I, well, i got to pray. I know that. So I, I live a life of prayer, praying for people. So... Monitor feelings and don't let certain feelings stay too long because all of a sudden they can become part of you. You think it's part of you. For example, you could become very negative by being around negative people and all of a sudden you're, you're negative. And you've got to pray, pray that negative spirit off. I wish I, wish I could uh, uh, tell you like, Pray now, now my name, but down to sleep, and praise the Lord, but so to keep it is going. But I'm talking about real praying. How many know what real praying is? I mean, you get down and you have to really pray. I mean, you have to fight the enemy. You have to rebuke the devil. You have to command that feeling to leave out. And you've got to quote scriptures, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I will not carry this gloom and doom around any longer. Because how many, how many of you know there's so many things happening in our society and in our particular family and our church family now that we could all just be crawling on our knees. And I guarantee I could call everybody here tonight and pretty well state some things that you're probably feeling and some things that you're having a hard time with. All of us, including Susan and me. Look, just look around you. You might think, well, look, they don't have any... What have they got to worry about? What have they got that's causing them to feel maybe down or, or discouraged? You know, we all do. So the big, one of the jobs coming, uh, we have as a, 
as, as believers in the Lord is to encourage one another in the Lord. And I go back to uh, the Old Testament there about King David. King David was out there. Saul was after him with about 3,000 men. They, they was trying to kill King David. When you read the Bible, what I want you to learn to do is try to touch King David's feelings. You got 3,000 men after him. The king of Israel, Saul, is after him, and they want to kill him. And put yourself in his place. What do you think he was feeling? Think it through a little bit. Hmm? Yippee, yippee, King Jaws after me, going to kill me. He had 300 men himself. Well, on top of that, he was fighting with the Philistines and helping them out, believe it or not. And uh, the Philistine had given David this city, Ziglag. You remember that in the Bible called Ziglag? And, and David and 600 men lived in this little town called Ziglag, and they would go off and fight with the Philistines and everything. And his wives and children and everything would stay in this little town. Well, these Egyptian uh, tr troops came in and burnt the city, took their wives and all their property, everything they had, and whoop, they're off with it. David and his um, men come back, which is 600 men, and, this, and the city's burnt. It, their wives are gone. The kids are gone. All their goodies are gone. <clears throat> Can you feel David? Anything? What do you think he's feeling about now? Can you touch his feelings just a little bit? Yippee, yippee, yippee. Bad feelings, you see. Down. But the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, we're saved. We're not, I'm not even talking about hell and heaven. We're not talking about salvation here. We're, we're children of God. We're down here on this earth for a while. We've got a battle to fight. These, this old flesh here has not been redeemed yet, and uh, it has some problems. And I can probably look out there and pretty well say, well, uh, let's see, Frank, I mean, uh, Willie don't have any problems, physical problems. Mike don't have no physical problems. Mrs. Mrs. Key, uh, Mrs. Keys don't have any physical problems. Mrs. James don't, Mr. James don't. Hattie, Hattie don't. I mean, do you, if you do, sort of raise your hand and see if I'm telling the truth. Yeah, RJ got any problems? Physical problems, RJ. Yeah, he's 20 years old, 21. The only person in here don't have any problems is Carol. Man, she she's holding on to her grandchildren. I mean, it's praying all the time. The kids, is that not true? And you know, and we come together, you know. And we all have these feelings of can be anxieties at times and concerned about our children, our grandchildren, and then we wonder, why did I have any children? And I mean, if I didn't have any children, I wouldn't have had no grandchildren. I wouldn't have had to worry about that. But, you know, there would have been something to worry about and something to make you feel bad, you know what I mean? So it is amazing what we have to fight and keep our faith in God and keep the devil off our back. So it's a big job we have just to maintain ourselves in the Lord. So... Don't think you're all alone, okay? And, uh, the, the, and we have to identify uh, these feelings that we have. And don't beat yourself up because you got feelings. How many has ever done that besides me? <laughs> why, why do I feel this way, you know? But you have to learn that you're still in these human bodies, and these human bodies feel things. I remember when I uh, was very aware of that when I was a young boy. How many had children in here that got their fingers caught in the car door? Let me see your hands. <laughs> Look at the hand. One, two, three, four, five. How many has ever had your fingers caught in? Look at the hands. <laughs> yeah. Did you find out you had feelings? Yeah, you had feelings. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you gotta, you got you to learn why you're feeling something. And our feelings can be our friends. Our feelings can be our friends, or they can be our enemies. Willie was sharing with me uh, 
Sunday when we were in the uh, Sunday school class, he come out here and he had a, had a neighbor. He don't believe in God. See, his neighbor don't believe in God. Is that right? And uh, would you tell that story now? Would you tell, would you tell that? Come up here. Let's get that on. That, that is powerful. You don't have to mention his name. But that's a powerful thing. And, I, and, and this is how people think. Just share that. That's, that's just something. I was uh, cleaning my, my, my car and my neighbor across the street, he's an engineer and uh, he had, he's gone for six months. So me and the other neighbors in the neighborhood kind of watch out for his house. So I saw this guy go up on the porch and he was knocking on the door. And this is one gentleman in the neighborhood that everybody just stays away from because he's really had problems. Anyway, I said, well, he's not home. And he looked at me like I was crazy, and he just kept knocking. So I said, oh, well, you know, I kept cleaning my car. So he came down off the porch, and he headed straight to, to me. And I, I'm saying, oh, Lord. You, you know, so when he got over, he just started venting and uh, talking about, you know, how the police treat him and uh, why do they do him this way? And I was telling him, you know, maybe it's your attitude. Maybe you need to change your attitude and people won't bother you as much. I said, you, uh, you need to pray, you know, and, and ask God to help you with your attitude. So he told me, he said, I don't believe in God. You know, I said, well, he's real. You know, he said, well, I don't believe in God. I hate God. I said, well, how can you hate somebody that you don't believe exists, you know? And uh, he kind of smiled, you know? And uh, we kept talking, and he said, well, I'm kind of like uh, O'Dowd and Thomas. I said, you believe in God. To say that, O'Dowd and Thomas, I said, you've either read that, you've heard that. I said, you believe that there is a God, you know? I said, but you just need to take time and settle down and, and uh, let God take over, you know, and uh, you won't have so many problems. The police will leave you alone. People in the neighborhood will leave you alone, you know, and things of that nature. And finally, I, I just shook his hand and told him that I would pray for him, you know, and I asked him his name. He told me his name. And usually, well, years ago, I would tell people, I'm going to pray for you. And I never did. But I went right in that garage and prayed for that man, Good. you know, and I prayed for him this morning, Good. you know. And I'm gonna call his name because okay. we don't. His name is Eugene. You Pray for Eugene. Okay. To good. the Lord to open up his mind Amen. and give good. him a desire to yeah. accept what Jesus Christ has done for him. Yes. Hey, but that, that, that's <laughs> tremendous. Now, how many of you know that he's got some feelings that are have, have gone deep into his psychic and deep into his heart, deep into his life? And it's poisoning his life because he did not deal with, know how to deal with the, the feelings. So they just build up, they build up, they build up inside uh, of people. And uh, it comes out in many ways. How many has been following this story on TV about this little boy, five years old, and this, this guy comes and takes him off the school bus and shoots the school bus uh, driver and takes the little boy and puts... Uh, uh, in his little hideout that he has underground. How many has been watching that? Let me see your hands so you know what I'm talking about. Now, the, the guy that did that, see, he never got in touch with his feelings. He never got his feelings aired out and, and uh, got victory over those feelings, and those feelings has molded his attitude and molded his character, and he's behaving like he's allowed those feelings and probably, how old is this guy, Eugene? Uh, 40, 40 years old, something like that. 40 years of stuffed down feelings, and it's going to come out in attitudes, it's going to come out in relationships, it's going to come out in your character, it's going to come out in your outlook, and you're not going to feel good either, okay? So th these are the problems that... that uh, people have, and, and we've had some too, because we've had to uh, get our feelings aired out and get them things settled and, and forgive people and bless people that have hurt us and caused us to have bad 
feelings. You'd be surprised how many people are mad at God. Yeah, because they blame God for everything. And God's a good God. He's, prov he's provided salvation for everybody. Just like Eugene's salvation is waiting for him. Christ died on the cross for Eugene. It's there. It's waiting for him to reach out by faith and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and receive his salvation. But see, all of those bad feelings has formed all these strongholds in his mind, and it comes out in our actions and our reactions. I have an email here that I, that I got. Listen to this. I want to read it. This is a, a prayer requ request by Roy. Please pray for Bryant. He is 22 years old. He is the son of a very close friend of mine. Brian has been battling depression off and on for several years. He tried to take his own life the night before last. He tried to hang himself, and only by the grace of God, the belt broke. Brian had already passed out from the lack of oxygen. Thank God he survived. Please lift Brian and his family up in prayer. God can fix this. Now, I want to I say something. I believe in miracles. I believe God can fix anything. But there's some things we've got to cooperate with God if God's going to fix it. Now, somebody say amen. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? You know, we just have to line up with the Word of God. So, Thank you, and God bless you. Now, I've dealt with too many people but but Brian has got to get into the Word of God and learn how to live, learn how to think, learn how to understand some of his feelings and to be able to give those feelings to the Lord and get it all cleaned out and get the blood get saved get filled with the Spirit. There's some things he's got to do. If he does it, he'll do it again. And I, I, want, you to, I, want, you to, I want you to hear what I'm saying because, because <clears throat> God can fix him. But that young man has got to get into the Word of God. I, I think there's, you're talking about feelings. I'm, I'm going to share my feelings. A young man, it can be a young woman, they have problems, and I listen to them and everything. And I know that if I don't get them into a discipline to read the Word of God, to understand the Word of God, come to Sunday school, come to prayer meeting, come to church, uh, fall in love with the Word of God, fall in love with Christ, above all, receive Christ as a Savior, and, and be persistent in that, They'll stay just like they are. Salvation is waiting. But they got to get involved. The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's not working for your salvation, but it's working it out. And this is what we're all doing. We're all saved, and we have to work out our salvation work out our problems, work out our feelings. Now, God has sent his word for Bryant and Eugene to accept it and obey it, and it'll heal them. My mother-in-law, she's with the Lord. Her husband would buy medicine for her. But the medicine always stayed on the shelf. She never took her medicine. The medicine could help her, but she wouldn't take. How many of you know the Bible says the word of God is medicine even to our flesh? And so getting back to my little frustration, which I have to give to God and flush myself out with it all, 
<clears throat> said, now, this is what you've got to do, young man, because the, the enemy's on your case, and let me tell you what he wants to do. He wants to kill you. Well, how do you know that, Pastor Bob? Well, see, I believe Jesus said something like, Satan has come to bless us, to save us. Huh? No, he's come to what? To what? Kill us, to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, how many believes that? Good. I'm talking to the right crowd. Because let me tell you something. That's why we have to resist him. And you... Uh, people live for 30 years, they never resist the devil. How much do you th problems do you think they got inside of them? They got a lot of problems because they don't know how to draw nigh to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from them. So if he don't resist the devil, he won't flee with you. I don't care if you're a child of God or not, he's going to have lunch with you every day. And you're going to be the lunch. You have... You cannot, we cannot be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Does that make sense? Did you all hear me? You cannot be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. You must know what the devices are, and you must be able to, to resist those uh, devices and resist the enemy, and you've got to know how to resist. Because I'm getting into the negative part of our feelings, because he can project feelings into you. I'll give you an example. You come to church. Now, I mean, nobody's in here like that, but some people are, you know, that, but none of you guys are, and I'm not that way, of course. <clears throat> I don't speak to you for two weeks. The devil, devil says, uh, huh, Pastor Bob, he's, he, one word, he spoke to me in two weeks. Right in your ear. Now, what happens? All of a sudden, you're getting feelings of rejection. Come on now. Try to identify. You, see, if you don't identify, you're going to miss it. Or you come to Sunday school, and Missy doesn't hug your neck. Or Yolanda don't hug your neck. And you think, well, maybe I got bad breath, or I, I think I put my deodorant on today. Uh, I mean, all these thoughts come into your mind. And you walk out and say, I, I don't think I want to go back to that church. The enemy just won a big fight over you because here in this church, I guarantee you, we'll sit down with you and help you with your problems if you're willing to obey. So all of these thoughts and stuff that goes into your mind comes over into feelings and then attitudes and then disposition And it's a dead-end road. You have got to clear your mind, your feelings, keep your feelings clean. Now, Susan learned this a long time ago. And, of course, when we were, got married, I was a Christian in my brain but not my heart. It took six, six years after I married Susan for it to drop from there 18 inches to my heart. And all I can tell you, when that day when I committed my life to Christ, there was a change, and I started sharing Christ with people. But Susan, during that period of time, she'd go in her closet, and she'd tell God everything. Now, I didn't, I said, what in the world is going on with her? I mean, she will say things like, Bob didn't treat me right today, Lord but I bless him anyway. I love him. He's my husband. But there again, he was late for lunch or he's late for supper. She'd tell, tell God everything. And you know, I encourage you to do that. Because you're not going to get rid of and air. You've got to air the, that stuff out of you. You've got to talk. You've got to share. I mean, find you a place somewhere nobody can hear you if that's possible, okay. And you just tell it like it is. How many, of course, nobody in here has ever done this. Somebody just seems, that, 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 that just, they just, it just bug you all the time. How many has ever had anybody bug you all the time? Let me see your hands. All right, 100%. That's good. Talking to the right crowd. And one day, 
you tell them what you really feel. Now, how many's ever done that? Let me see your hands. <laughs> and, and you, I mean, you let them have it, both barrels at the same time. I mean, you tell them everything. And boy, when you're through, I mean, it may take five minutes. Woo, boy, do you feel wonderful. And the, and the person that you did that to is under the table. I mean, he's dead almost. You blasted him good. But you see, you, that's what confession is for. Just get it out. Get it out. Now, <clears throat> Susan and me have learned. Remember I said learned? I think it took 24 hours to learn it. I mean, I just, it took longer than that. We have learned. Honey, I said, just, just tell me. Just tell me. Tell me like it is. Don't butter it up. Tell it like it is. I don't want you to butter it up. I don't want no tea with it. I don't want no banana pudding with it. Tell it like it is. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Don't go around the whole, I, don't, I ain't got time for that. Just tell me what it is, darling. And she'll tell it just like it is. And so I don't speak to her for two weeks. Because <laughs> nobody in here like that, I know. I think I'll drink a little water. It's getting hot in here now. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say tonight, why, why did this young man, that this email, why did he want to hang himself? 22 years old. If you find this is wrong, let me know. But 22 service people commit suicide every day. Boy, please find out if that's wrong, let me know. 22. It was on the internet. No, that was on the news. I call that on the news. 35,000 people in the United States every year commit suicide. 750 people attempt suicide. People are going around and, and, and submachine gunning people down, killing the children. You've got to stop and you've got to think, what's going on? I remember the day in Charleston, South Carolina, you didn't have to, you, didn't, you could leave your, your windows up at night and didn't have to worry about nobody crawling in and stealing. You didn't have to lock your doors. I'm telling you the truth. I, how many would do that now? <laughs> Mothers need to teach their children to air themselves out, get it out, if you let it pack up. And Susie could tell when she needed to get it out because she said it would stack up like this, you know. How many have it, you had to stack up in here about like that, and you felt like you was going to explode. And it can be, it's not that you're mean, that you're an awful person, you're a human being. And that's just the way it is, and we have to flush ourselves out. And this is why getting uh, the scripture sheets that we, we, we developed uh, and made this scripture sheet here, was that as you, as you take the word of God, and you'll see in Ephesians, that it, it's a, has a washing effect. And as you, as you say this, uh, uh, and, and just say it out loud, boy, I love it. I, every time before I come out here, I wash myself with the word of God. I'm back in my office. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am complete in Christ. I have no sense of inferiority before God. I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm a new creation being. Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so our biggest problem is we learn these truths, we do them for about a week or two, and then we forget them, and we're not persistent in it. So being persistent in anything, I don't care... Uh, 
Have you ever seen somebody really good in basketball? You know, they practice one time and they, hit the, and they, and they put the thing in the net every time after that, don't they? How many of you know they practice day, day, day and night, day and night, week in and week out? They practice and become good at it. Now remember, these DVDs go out, so we're preaching to the world tonight, not just you. Most of you know these principles anyway. But we need to hear them again, because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. <coughs> so, understand what you're feeling, why are you feeling what you are feeling, if you can identify with your feelings. Now this is another thing we have to learn we have to learn to talk all over again. I did when I became a Christian. I realized life and death is in the power of the tongue. I mean, I can crush Susan like that. I can crush you like that. I can beat everybody to the altar tonight under condemnation. I used to do that when I was at the Baptist church. If you didn't come to the altar, when I gave the altar a call, I'd throw the Bible at you. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, seriously, I mean, you know, you don't talk to Christians like you do sinners. You have to understand that. You're saved. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You're a child of God. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, sometimes that evangelistic spirit jumps up, you know, and I, if you're not careful, I can blast you. But I try not to. But my job as a teacher is to build your faith and to try to get you moving in the right direction. And tonight I'm trying to get us all to understand our feelings. So what are you feeling tonight? And if you're feeling something negatively that's putting you down, why are you feeling what you're feeling? Does that make sense? How many of you know, how many knows cause and effect? If you know cause and effect, raise your hand. For every... For every cause, there's an effect. You got everybody know that? I mean, that's just a law, period. So you got to go back and try to find the cause. Why do I feel the way I feel about that person? Why do I feel this way about my husband? Ooh. Why do I feel this way about my wife? Ooh. Why do I feel this way about my mother-in-law? Oh, boy. I'd <laughs> Let's move on, Bob. <clears throat> Why do I feel this way about Pastor Bob? Why do I feel this way about Sister So-and-so? I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? See, there's a reason. Is it jealousy? Hmm? Does that person outshine you and you feel insignificant, and you feel insignificant, so you've got to do something to make yourself look bigger and them look smaller by maybe a little gossip about them. You see, there's a, there's a cause and effect, a cause and effect. Why do you do this? Why do you feel this way? Okay, now, you're gonna, this is where, you know, seeking God. Now, let's move on with our little letter here on the, on the back side. Are we ready? We're talking about Hebrews. Uh, let's turn on page first, the first part. All right, here, we'll start with the first part. Everybody see uh, the first page. You've got your first page. Down at the bottom, you'll see a dirty conscience should not be ignored. All right. Now, would you, f would you recognize or discern or do you feel when your conscience is dirty? Now, think it through. I know I'm saying some things that I need to jar your, 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 your mind because you need to conceive that. Because a lot of people are walking around with a dirty conscience. And buddy, there's no joy in that. So, you've got to make sure your conscience is clear. If, you're not, if, you're, if your conscience is not clean, you're going to walk around feeling condemned. How many people have said, Bob, I feel condemned. Well, why do you feel condemned? Have you ever, of course, I've preached on conscience before, but keeping our conscience clean and clear is important because if your conscience is not, 
you're going to feel guilty. You follow me? Now, let me see. How many knows you have a conscience? All right, very good. How many would know if your conscience was dirty? Very good. So you're in touch with your conscience. You understand it is part of you, and your job is to keep it clean. Now, I'm going to just stop here for a minute. If I watch something on TV that I know, as me being a man of God and a pastor and, and God's servant, and if I'm watching something on TV that I know that, he, that it, it, it leans more to the carnal, it, lean, it leans more to the flesh, my conscience will bother me. How many have experienced that? Let me see your hands. Good. You're, so th that's good because, see, keeping our conscience clear will help us to walk and have a holy and clean life, okay? And uh, so anything it, it, that, that, that would be on that TV, that if, it, because after a while, I, know, it, 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 uh, I, would, I would say it this way. It's a little uneasiness there. In your, in, it's like a negative, a little uneasiness right down in your spirit, in your conscience there, in your spirit, part of the uh, spirit man. You feel, you don't feel good in doing that. How many have done it anyway? Just, I got it, because I want to see how this thing ends, you know? You know, you start out, sir, you start out with some of these movies, boy, this is going to be good, you know? And, and then as you move on into it, then it gets more shadier, more uh, sensual, more carnal. But I, I got to keep looking at this thing to watch it. I mean, I fought that. And, and it's like God's going to say, Bob, are you going to obey your conscience or just go ahead and sear your conscience? Look at that stupid thing. I mean, it's ever, come on, we're all human beings. Your pastor's human. The, the leadership is human. No, no, you can't bluff me, boy. I tell you, I've been around too long. I was even a deacon one time. I know what the deacons do. I was a deacon. Deacon Bob. And these are the things that, that, and really, you know, after a while, you say, you know, my peace, my peace with God is better than this. You know, your conscience will just beat you to pieces till you finally say, God, I'm drawing a line in the sand, and by your grace and your mercy, I'm not going to read that Playboy magazine anymore. I think last week I shared about the Playboy magazine about Susan and uh, my little granddaughter finding one out there on the driveway, and I don't think I finished it. And I was telling Susan about that, and she said, well, did you tell them what I did with it? And I said, yeah, you picked it up and read it. Okay. She went back and got the shovel. That's, and we had a fireplace in the back. With that shovel, she wouldn't touch that thing. She put that thing on there, and 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 burn it. Boy, I like that Playboy too. That was a good one too. <laughs> anyway, I'm just kidding. It, I didn't buy that Playboy magazine. But see, listen, we fought, we have to fight. Hello, are you out there? We ha the girls don't have to, but men have to fight those things. <gasps> He is such a truthful pastor. I don't I can stand this truth. Listen, God made men a certain way. And there's certain things we like. You may be saved and sanctified, but you sure better watch what you look at and, 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 and think and all that because you can get unsanctified real quick. Like, come on, church, let me just a little bit. Come on, i got to tell the truth. You know, I'm not going to be around here much longer, you know. 20 more years, I'm out of here. But these are the things that people fight. This young guy got saved. And uh, he come to me. He was down, man, he was feeling low. I said, what is it? 
said, you know, I got saved last week. I said, I know, I know. We're going to water baptize you another couple weeks. He said, but, you know, I still like the way girls look. I said, thank God. <laughs> Son, listen, can I tell you like it is? You still in this old body, anybody in their resurrected body out there, RJ, you in your resurrected body yet, son? You looking forward to it, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Yeah, I can tell that right now. I'm looking forward to mine. No, you still in these bodies and you got to take charge. And there's times when you're going to look when you ain't supposed to look. And that's what we got, 1 John 1, 9. Thank you, Father. Forgive me. Help me. I need your help. How many has ever cried out to God for help? Huh? I mean, he is our helper. The Holy Spirit's going to come and he'll be your helper. Okay? Now, so all these feelings, see, are, are mounting up in you, and you've got to clear yourself of all your feelings. Now, you've heard people say, clear, all, clear yourself of all these sins. How about the feelings you have? And you need to come to the Lord and say, God, I need a lot of my feelings to be cleansed, and he'll do it for you. Okay? Now, let's read this here. A dirty conscience should not be ignored but rather investigate it. False guilt is an indication of a faulty belief. Is a clear conscience important? According to God's word, yes. So a clear conscience is important. Look at what the scripture says. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge, your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Turn to page Hebrews 9, 14. So with that said, I believe it is important to have a clear conscience, but we can only have that clear conscience when we stand firm on God's word and believe what it really says about the forgiveness of our sins. When we truly believe that the blood of Christ has paid the full price for our failures, only then can we have a truly clean conscience. As long as we think that we messed up too badly or need to do something before we can be forgiven, we will live with a dirty conscience. That is because we don't truly believe we are forgiven. And when we don't believe that we are forgiven, how on earth can we expect to feel like it? We can't. Now, boy, this is important. I was witnessing to this man out here he was uh, working on the telephones i think uh, on this post right out here so i stopped and i started talking with him and uh, i was sharing the gospel with him and i said are you saved and he said well i used to go to church i said well what church did you go to he said i went to a holy church i said oh i said well are you walking with god now he said no uh, I've given up on it. I said, well, i got something to tell you. God has not given up on you. I said, he loves you. He died on that cross for you. Now, let me tell you something. I, I was reaching for something because I know what you believe is important. Someone may say, Bob, are you healed? I believe I'm healed. But the manifestation hasn't showed up yet. Let me run that through you again. Bob, are you healed? I believe I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. But the manifestation hasn't showed up yet. Are you following me? See, that's faith. So... We have, to, we have to realize there are strongholds in people's minds. Now, there was a stronghold in this man's mind, and I was reaching for it as I talked with him, knowing something about the Pentecostal uh, church, and they're good people. They've they're, they're got a lot of good saved people in there. The holiness uh, movement is wonderful. They, they love God. But don't make no mistake, because if you do, you're lost again. And this guy was, uh, had this stronghold in his mind that he had done something that God could not forgive him. So therefore, why even try to serve God? 
And he felt that God had just washed his hands from his life. Now I knew where that was coming from because I've dealt with people like that before that have these strongholds in their mind. I said, have you done the unpardonable sin? He said, what's that? I said, rejecting Christ. There's one thing that will send you to hell, and that is rejecting Christ. Very important to understand that. Jesus mentioned that in, in St. John. Those that believe not are condemned already because they have not believed in the only begotten Son of God, so therefore they're condemned. But they can come out of that condemnation and that condem condemning state by believing. So what we believe is important. What you believe, what I believe, will either liberate us or it will bind us and cause the devil to attack us. Do you understand that? Okay? You'd be, look up all the scriptures in the Bible about believing. So we've got to believe the right thing. So, let's finish reading this. Keeping our conscience clear. Now, let's, let's move into, uh, well, Bob, how do, you, how do I get my conscience clear, okay? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus washes away our sins, and it will cleanse our conscience. And if you feel like you have a dirty conscience, and you've been doing something that you know you shouldn't do. Now, listen to this now. He that knoweth to do good... And doeth it not, to him it is sin. Did you get it? So, I believe something is sin, but you don't believe it is sin. Now, now if the Bible says it's sin, it's sin. But there are things that one person may believe it's uh, sinful, and the other person might not believe it's sin sinful. Okay? I don't want to open up any kegs of worms, but why not? <laughs> we could go fishing. <laughs> Better not, Bob. All right, getting back to the conscience. All right, let's make it simple. If that's possible. I could eat meat. Now, I'll stay on scripture ground this way. I can eat meat that's been offered to idols. Could you? Now, that's in the Bible, Romans. Paul, because that was an issue. That was an issue in the first century church. One person can eat the meat that was offered to idols, and it don't bother his conscience at all. This other person cannot eat the meat because he thinks that those idols are really, really idols. I mean, they're really gods. So his conscience would be offended. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? If you read the Bible, you know what I'm talking about. If you hadn't read it, read it. It's in Romans, I think it's in 14, somewhere there. Now, on the other hand, I say, well, I can eat the meat, it don't bother me, but it bothers me. Maybe I'll use Willie as an example. Is that okay? Willie can't eat the meat. I can eat the meat. Don't bother my conscience, but if he ate, it would bother his conscience. All right? But suppose I go ahead and say, well, I'm going to eat my meat right in front of him even though it offends him. Now I'm sinning. You know why I'm sinning? Because I'm not walking in love. You understand that? So, Paul says, you know, when you eat your meat, don't eat it in front of the brother that feels like it's sin because you're offending him. Just take the meat, get, go home, and uh, eat it in your home away from him where he cannot see it. So a lot of things that we have to watch out for that you might be able to do, but some other people in the congregation cannot do it because it would offend their conscience, and they would get a dirty conscience. And you say, well, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. 
Now you're not walking in love. So you're sinning now. You see? We'll get all that straight. We don't have time to go into it. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? All right, good. I'm talking to Okay, let's move on here. Turn the thing around. Hmm. As long as we think that we've messed up too badly, okay. Let me get back to this guy that I was talking to. I tried to get that stronghold torn down in his mind where he could, co could come back to the Lord. He was believing that God would not accept him. And I said, listen, I would go with God. God is merciful, and he'll forgive you. Repent of your sins, come back to him, and start living for him. How many of you know, unless he gets that stronghold of what he believes out of his mind, he's going to stay in that same condition? Follow me now. See, this thing, when you're working with people, you've got to know some things. I mean, you've got to be taught by the Holy Ghost. But he, kept held, he just held to that wrong belief that God would not forgive him. And he stayed in that condemn, that, com, under that condemnation. Now, there may be other elements which I'm also aware of that some people enjoy being backslidden. Anybody in here? You understand that? Because they do what they want to do when they want to do it. They have no restrictions on their life and um, not realizing that what the end thereof is, death. The enemy has deceived them to that point. So many, many people have to unlearn, when they come into this assembly, have to unlearn so much where we can teach them the truth. Okay? And that's a big job. And if they're not willing to unlearn some of the stuff they've been taught, I guarantee you, some, all of us have probably heard things that our father and mother said to us when we were young. And, now, and, then, and then as you begin to read the Bible, and you would say, boy, mom was way off there. How many in here can say that? Huh? You know? And, and see, they learned it from their, their grandparents and their mom, you know. I mean, all kind of weird stuff. Yeah. You do that, Bob, your hair will fall out. You do, you, you do that and you had it. Well, what they're trying to do, trying to scare us out of hell, you know. <laughs> they, huh? You know what I mean? Trying to keep them from killing ourselves, you know. All right, let's move on. Fear is another feeling which is completely unnecessary in the life of a believer. Fear will make a coward out of you. Now, I know nobody in here has ever, but when I, uh, there was a time in my life that there, there was, it, I had a certain amount of fear to approach certain people about their about their salvation. Now, I don't have that now. Believe me, I'm, I'm bold on it now. I'll come right up. I've had them say, get out of here. No problem. Love you, brother. Knock the dust off my feet and go out. But, you, but that fear, if you got that fear to share Christ with people, you're in bondage. And we all have had it. Come on, raise your hand if you've had it. Sure, we all have, because the devil makes sure that we get full of that, where we won't share our salvation. You've got a great testimony. God did something great in your life. Pastor Bob says, come on up and share what the Lord did this week for you. And you sit there. Huh? Come on. Is that true? Huh? I'm, I was that way. Susan, you go up there. Make a fool of yourself. Go on up there, Susan. Tell them. Is that right? See, see we've got to see ourselves in the message. If you don't see yourself in the message, 
you know? Here's how you break it. Find somebody and go right up to them and say something like, oh, just get the conversation rolling. Like, hey, brother, you know the Lord loves you? You know, he's going to, he don't love me, boy. I I said, what do you mean he don't love you? Don't you realize he died on the cross for you? He shed his blood for you? You've got salvation waiting for you right now in heaven, but you've got to accept it through Christ. See, it'll just get rolling. Once you get it rolling, you got got the word in you. You just share the word. Well, I'm not going to believe. I said, boy, you're going to miss out on a lot of blessings. I'm going to live with God throughout eternity. One day I'm going to have a glorified body. But there are those that don't believe are going to go have to go to hell. And God don't want that. You know, God doesn't want that. It's not God's will for any man to perish, but have everlasting life. Why don't you receive him right now? You can. Get out of here. Okay. Bye. I think I'll go to Hardy's to get me a Hardy burger. See, just be, just, it's, it, you know, it's so easy. We talk about everything else, but don't Richard Jesus. No, I know there are some times where, you know, it talks about don't, don't um, cast your pearls, uh, uh, you know, upon uh, uh, the swans, you know, and that type of thing. But, you know, find somebody and see what happens. Try it out. In fact, next Wednesday night, we're going to be talking about how to win people to Christ. So make sure you come, bring somebody with you. So we're going to go and uh, go through our through that time, and, and uh, we'll win each other to Jesus. I, I'd like to do that. We need to get back to that. All right. <clears throat> Fear is another feeling which is completely unnecessary in the life of a believer. How do we know this? God's Word tells us that perfect love casts out all fear for those who think that fear is a natural and unavoidable feeling. God's Word tells us that he who fears has not been made perfect in love. How many has ever had fear in here? Yeah. Now let me say this. Certain fear is good. I got that rattlesnake behind there. I brought out here. And, of course, Mrs. James, she's got her cane. She whipped that thing, to, that rubber thing to death. <laughs> How many know that's a good, hey, that's a good fear. That's a good fear. You know what I mean? There are good fears. If you come up, now, I think the older you get, too, like when I was young, I'd get, go up in the mountains, and I'd just stand right on the edge of the cliff and look down there, and wait, it wouldn't bother me. Man, you can't get me 10 foot closer to that thing now because I'm too wobbly, you know. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I mean, no one talking about So there's certain fears, and we don't have time to go into all of that. But there's a fear that comes from the enemy, and there's a fear that, that the enemy's put into us that will cause us not to share Christ with, with people, and we miss the biggest blessings in the world. The biggest blessings in the world. But next Wednesday night, we'll be teaching on how you can do it, and we'll let you do it right here in front of each one of us. I'll let you win me to the Lord, okay? Again. All right. God feared. God fear, Don't believe them but rather seek to be established and made perfect in God's great love for you. That will dispel those fears which most people do is, by, is go by their feelings and believe them. Now, there's times when you can believe your feelings and there's times that you better not believe your feelings. So there's a balance in all of this. And this is something we have to learn as we live in life. Now, I've had women say, I don't love my husband no more. Now, wait a minute. Is your husband a Christian? Yeah. Well, you've been commanded to love him because he's not only your husband, he's your brother in the Lord. Read 1 John. He talks about that, John. 1 John talks about it. We've got to love one another. We've been commanded to love one another. And you might not feel it all the time. But I know there's things you can know. I know I love people. And there's sometimes I don't feel it. And you don't feel it either. You know, when you get older, you have feelings that you didn't have when you were younger. How many know that? 
You know, how many of ever seen that little DVD on Up? The, the house goes up in the balloon, and the balloons take the house up, you know. And he gets real old, and he, get, he gets beside the bed, and he, everything cracks. You know, he got, and I do that sometimes with Susan, and she'll get up and go, I said, okay, baby, we got it up now. Let's roll. Let's get the coffee pot on. <laughs> you can have fun with it. You can have fun with it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you go early. But get in touch with your feelings. Write things down that, that, that maybe you don't understand what you're feeling. Maybe we can help you. Let, let's, get, let's get a team going here. Let's talk about some of these things that, that, that are, are besetting uh, and just keeping us held back. Why do you feel like you feel? You know, we need to know. You need to know. We all need to learn. And it can be the devil. It can just be you're getting older. I mean, I'm 80 years old. I got feelings in my feet I never had when I was 20. My toe, I, it's a funny feeling about my toes. I don't know how they, they want to draw up or something. <laughs> I get a kink in my leg. I said, Susan, what? What? Pull my leg. What? Oh, I got a kink in it. Oh. <laughs> it's, we have fun with it. I love you guys. And I hope you get in touch with your feelings this week. Write some things down and let's have a good time. But next week, we're going to go into the soul winning. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night. If you need prayer, come up.